In our last video, we finished the aft stateroom and got right into refinishing the cabin sides and port lights. Step one of this project was to remove the teak frames on the outside of the boat. I did my best to keep them intact. Once I got them off and I didn't mess up the paint on the outside of the boat, I then handed these teak frames to my friend Ryan, who has a water jet CNC machine. We decided to do it at a 316 stainless. Overall, I think it was about $1,500 in all of the frames to be cut and delivered. And again, that's not very much at all when you factor in a new Newfound Metals port light. For us, they were gonna be at about $700 a piece in bronze. So you can do the math. Uh, we have nine port lights. It would have been very expensive. All right, so we got our port lights off. As you can see, uh, we got quite a bit of corrosion just over the last 35, 40 years. So before I put it on the buffer, um, I'm using some Bright Boy and just a couple pieces of Scotch Bright, and not very hard, but just pretty lightly. I've just been getting the you know the really big stuff off before I put it on the buffing wheel because if I put it on the buffing wheel now, it'll just chalk up and uh, it won't work out very well. I am wet sanding our new port light frames. So we finally got these in from our friend Ryan who was kind enough to water jet these for us. So we have all brand new port lights which is great because it means we just were able to rebuild the port lights we already had, um, just replacing the teak frames on the outside. after all of the stainless has been wet sanded and after the port lights have been bright boyed, they are ready for the buffing machine. Moving inside, we had a lot of work to do. The old cabin side was made out of teak and it just really dated the whole boat. So right off the bat, we wanted to do something white. This is almost like a, a wallpaper. I mean, it, it doesn't, it's not plywood. I thought forever it was plywood, but uh, you can see it's a super thin, I mean, razor thin teak with like almost a cardboard texture on the back. So I, I, I think that it is a type of wallpaper. At first, I had always thought about repainting it in something like all grip. But all grip is very expensive, and in order to get as flat of a look as I wanted, it was going to require a lot of fairing. Um, so we decided to use Formica. Now Formica is a countertop laminate. It's made out of fiberglass. It's really tough stuff. And uh, really I wanted something that was going to last a long time. We were able to cut and individually you know, put them up on the side of the wall, and in one day the entire sides were done. Sometimes things don't always go your way. Uh, this board is like curved and it wants to pop off, so I'm gonna hold it until it cures. <laughs> it's only 20 minutes. What's, what's the worry? I got a beer. A lot has changed since Avocet was built in 1979. We love teak more than anybody, but having these white accents allows the light to come in and make this space feel more like a home instead of a cave. Installing Formica meant we had to remove our handrail. Now I was perfectly okay with this because our handrail looked horrible. We had a lot of water damage. Uh, the inside finger well right here had about 35 years of gunk and just crap. And you can never really get all that out and clean it and re-varnish it while it's on the side of the boat. So being able to take it off, completely clean it, completely sand it and re-varnish it before going back up uh, was a-okay with me. So I got the handrails all finished up. I got the inside lip here all nice and cleaned up. Um, so when we varnish it, it's going to be way easy to keep clean this time. And I made these holes a little bit bigger so we can fit our new big bungs in there. It's always nice when we start to wrap up a project that we can do things like this. Wow. Just like that. Turns a very ugly thing into a very pretty thing. Mm -hmm. Ugly. Pretty. Ugly. Tape 
after running a Cicaflex barrier on the inside of our handrail. So that means any water is going to just stay in the handrail and not leak out into our cabinets. All right, so it is now the time uh, for a lot of varnishing on Avocet. All of the teak trim has been pulled off, and right now I have the teak trim for the windows still on the side of the dock, and the handrail is back installed like you guys saw. We put the bungs back in. It's been sanded with 220, and it's ready for varnish. After a lot of research, I found that spar varnish has been my, my favorite go-to uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, the first reason that it allows the wood to breathe. It's mineral-based, and unlike a polyurethane varnish, uh, or polyurethane is really just a plastic coating that you can put over your teak, uh, that plastic coating hardens and it doesn't allow the teak to breathe. Now on a boat, you're going from really cold to hot, and uh, wood naturally contracts and expands. And the beauty behind spar varnish uh, is that it allows the teak to expand and contract. Uh, at least that's the idea. All right, so we're inside the boat now, uh, work on the handrail. This has six coats of varnish on it. I still have uh, a good amount of grain showing in the, in the top coat. So what you want to do to fix that is grab some sandpaper. Right now I'm using 320. Uh, you can use 220. I wouldn't go anything really lower than that. You really want a high grit so it's not going to score the surface. And you're just going to run it over at the top. Basically you're going to keep going until all you see is white. You're going to try to sand until those low spots are also getting hit by the sandpaper. When you do the sanding routine in between coats, you're flattening out the last top coat uh, and you're getting rid of the grain. So right before you start varnishing, you're going to want to grab a rag and get it damp with some, in my case, mineral spirits uh, and just wipe down all of the extra residue that's on here and you'll be ready to varnish. The final step in this process was to reinstall our port lights. Uh, all of the non-opening port lights, like this one right here, got brand new glass, and all of the opening port lights were already in pretty good shape. So I just buffed them all out, cleaned them up, revarnished the teak trim, and reinstalled everything using Butyl and Cicaflex. So we are just dry fitting our port lights. It takes a little bit of convincing because this is all new and never done this before. So uh, all the holes are not drilled right now. I just put it on the inside right now, put two clamps on, uh, got the outside roughly where we want it, and then I'll uh, fine tune it, drill them all, and then come back and seal it up. So for this non-opening port light, I, uh, I have the glass here, and you can see I taped around the edges. Um, so what I went in is I had some 150 sandpaper, and I scratched up the edges to give it a good tooth for the Cicaflex to hold on to. Um, not only is the tape there for that reason, so I didn't scratch the rest of the glass, but uh, I'll also be able to run my, my finger around and give it a good bead of Cicaflex, and then peel off the tape, and then hopefully be done with that. So this port light is ready to go on. couldn't be happier with how the inside came out. This white just brightens up the entire interior. Uh, we can have one light on and that's pretty much all we need. The stainless steel frames on the outside of the boat look awesome, but more importantly, they're incredibly strong. They add to the entire structural integrity of the actual cabin top. 
This gives us the confidence that we need when we go offshore. So that's it for this project. Uh, we did a lot of work and we're really happy with the end result. Uh, we got to use you know, some of the old parts from our boat and we always like to do that. We like to reutilize certain pieces so that way it doesn't just feel like a new boat. Uh, this feel, still feels like the same Avocet we bought and uh, the outside just looks a lot newer and a lot more spiffy.